so it's the next day already and I got this uh, installed and I was kind of brushing it mindlessly putting it in and I put it in upside down after explaining to you guys explicitly to make sure you know the right pattern the right side um, so for most of these I'm writing other side other side other side so that when you put it in and you see other side you're like oh other side so I, I need to flip this over I almost forgot so some of these bars of Tamascus um, have a little bit of a warp to them. I mean, you got to think when they're making it, it's forged and hammered, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on inside the material. So this jaw system, where it's kind of evenly clamping it among the whole thing, as I tighten it down, I can hammer it with my dead blow and kind of flex it all flat so that at least it's flat in the initial operation. And then as you cut out all the smaller pieces, it's less important that they're super flat because it's not so big. Does that make sense? This is where the magic happens right here. So real quick, I just want to comment on the toolpath that I like to use for these. Right now I'm cutting this rask thing. I haven't stepped up and actually cut the piece of black Tamascus yet. So I cut the holes first using a ramping uh, helical ramp spiral and then basically I'm, I'm uh, ramping down around the whole perimeter slowly 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 because I want to put the least amount of force on this part um, and I just find that this it, it's happier that way you could mill a little hole here go full depth and then profile around it but titanium is not super forgiving with these tiny little tools um, you can see the size of the tool there based on the handle. It's pretty small. So I'm ramping my way around it and uh, it seems to work fine. Two degree ramp, 10 inches per minute, 8,500 RPM, works great. Tool lasts for a long time. I basically throw away the tool after doing this Tamascus because it's a critical tool that I use for something else. So uh, I don't want it to be bad, but works really well. And this is how they come out. Two handles, the proper inside of the handles. Two clips, the proper inside of the clips. Beautiful. All right, boys and girls, finally ready to run this black Tamascus. Here's my yield and my tool paths. I'm gonna get two Norseman handles, two Norseman clips, a bunch of Norseman thumb studs, and two of these backspacers, which is something I've never done before so it's really tricky to get those in there while also being able to do finishing operations on them. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to cut these out. So when I'm running these fancy materials, you can never be too careful. I wanna make sure that my offsets are right, that my tool offsets are right, my work coordinate system, that I'm using the right end mill, obviously. Um, so, usually what I do, once it gets going, is I slow it down. I've got my hand on the rapid feed rate, the rapid override knob right there. I'll slow it down, I'll turn the coolant off, and I'll take it down till just above the surface, right there. We're looking about that far above the surface. I look here, I see my Z is at point two. Um, so I can visually go, that looks like point two, that looks like point two, golden opportunity. Um, I can trust it now. It's kind of, it's not moving right now because I turned this down to zero, but uh, once I turn the coolant back on, or sometimes I'll even, um, I'll even cut the first few little chips until I see it move and hopefully you can see that, and then I'll turn the coolant back on, and we're good to go. Sometimes if I want to check on the progress of a code halfway through, I'll hit the optional stop button, which will stop at any M1 line safely right before the next tool change. Um, so I can go in here and I can check on the progress. So it's done some holes, it's finished uh, you know, milling out the holes to size. Now it's gonna change out that, in, that end mill for a different one. And then I'm gonna turn off the optional stop and then hit go again. And we broke a tool. Not surprising, this stuff is difficult. You can see the bit of tool still sticking up there. It's currently profiling the backspacer as it's ramping down at an angle. 
Uh, no big deal, I just have to pull out the broken bit and make sure there are zero broken bits in there otherwise. And put a new tool in and uh, continue. But it got pretty far. So I was able to pull out <clears throat> the bit of broken carbide and when you can look at the good end and still see all four corners, all four flutes, then you know there's nothing left. Like there's nothing still stuck in the hole which is always a terrible situation, but I can look at this under the loop and see that it only broke at the shaft, not at the tips, so that's good. So under magnification, under the loop, you can actually see that it loaded up with material on that one flute. Yeah, they chip a little bit in the corners, but they're all still there. So yeah, it just loaded up and then it became too much for this, this small tool, so it broke off. This is a 332nd, a 93 thou, Four flute end mill from Lakeshore, and uh, I like to keep a lot of them on hand. In titanium, they last for a very long time, but in Timascus, they're they wear. That's fine. Hey guys, Aaron here. Thanks for watching that little two-parter on John cutting Timascus. It was quite an interesting process for him, even if it was about. Uh, a year ago now. That is old footage and that's all the old footage I have for that particular project but the next video that's going to come out is going to be a part three to that series and it's some old footage of John working with some zirconium for a different client. Uh, so stay tuned for that, like and subscribe for more of this kind of content and I will see you later.